Order, members. And uh, before we begin the uh, listed questions to the minister, uh, can I just inform members that questions 4, 5, 12, and 15 have been withdrawn? And uh, I call Mr. Trevor Lunn. Uh, Gormay, I got three of last time call you. It's cast over a hand to the minister. That's question number one. Grateful to the member. Um, the uh, proposed grade separated junctions on the A1 between Hillsborough Roundabout and Loch Brickland form part of the A1 junctions phase two proposal. This proposal includes the additional junction improvements, um, including four flyover type junctions, closing up all openings in the central median, installing a continuous central safety barrier, and closing some minor road junctions along this stretch of the route. Following extensive feedback received, both at the public information event held in November 2013 and over the following months, the proposals have been reviewed. As a result, significantly fewer closures of minor road junctions with the A1 are being proposed than previously, and these will now remain open for left-in and left-out access. <coughs> a northbound on-slip at Castlewell and Road Band Bridge will also improve access at this junction. I have yet uh, I have not yet made a decision on the preferred option for the scheme. Mr. Lund, for supplement. Yes, I, I thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, I, I may have missed just the first part of it when he mentioned the Hillsborough Roundabout. Um, so could I ask him, is that to be included in the proposed amendments? And also, do you have any idea at the moment of the priority which will be given to the particular junctions in terms of those closest to Belfast, perhaps, which carry the most traffic? I grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. The, the, uh, the project in mind is to deal with the junctions, um, uh, the entire route uh, basically of the A1, and that, uh, that there is uh, separate work being carried out to look at uh, the, the Hillsborough uh, junction, and a number of members have been asking questions and inquiring about that uh, over a period of time. Uh, and so uh, that work uh, is ongoing. Uh, and I have outlined the situation when it comes to um, our, our plans, our proposals for the, for the junctions along the A1, uh, stretching um, uh, almost its entirety. Mr. I got the people asking, Cordia, is the Minister aware of uh, pro development proposals for car parking at Hillsborough Castle entering and exiting off the A1 and what impact these might have? To the uh, member for his supplementary question, I am indeed aware, um, and I uh, am due to meet, I think, early in the new year, uh, representatives from uh, the uh, from uh, Hillsborough Castle and, uh, and the Royal Palaces. Um, obviously, uh, the, the A1 is a protected route, so we would have to look very carefully uh, at any proposals um, that uh, others might uh, be suggesting. But uh, we will certainly um, engage in that meeting see what uh, the view is from the Royal Palaces, because except uh, the, the huge potential uh, that Hillsborough Castle uh, 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 as a royal residence uh, will have as a tourist facility, I'm sure the member will, will want to acknowledge that, um, and uh, uh, no doubt that if he hasn't been, that, that, that an early invite can be arranged. But um, uh, I, I do see the huge potential in, in terms of tourism, but there are perhaps practical difficulties, not least uh, the, the, the status of a protected route uh, on the A1. Mr. Leslie Cree. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his response. It's certainly very interesting. Minister, perhaps you, you've given us a broad outline, and perhaps you could uh, maybe outline just the next stages of this scheme as they occur. Well, I'm grateful uh, to, to the member for his um, supplementary, uh, and, and he will know that a significant amount of development work has already been progressed, uh, how much, however much remains to be done. Uh, the next stage includes uh, completing the detailed design and taking the proposal through the environmental statement, the direction order, and best in order uh, statutory pr uh, procedures, uh, a process which is likely to include public inquiries. The proposal is estimated to, to cost in the range of 35 to 45 million. However, there is an opportunity to deliver the um, proposal in phases, that is, constructing one uh, junction at a time, with associated closing of gaps in the central median and an erection of um, a, sa a central safety barrier. 
Delivery um, of uh, this scheme remains subject to a clearing statutory procedures, having a satisfactory economic appraisal, and is dependent on future funding levels. I call Mr. John uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And I'm grateful to the Minister for uh, his replies. And, uh, he and I are both very familiar with this section of road and encourage that he would consider at least moving uh, in different stages, possibly with closures of central reservations quickly. Could I also ask the Minister if um, all of this work was to be completed, and bearing in mind this road is part of our main economic corridor, would he consider uh, the speed restrictions at both Bambridge and Ramore that we would, being those the only two reduced speed limits between Belfast and Dublin on a permanent basis, would he consider uh, those re the removal? The member for his uh, for his question, and indeed um, he and I uh, travel that road uh, very often, mostly separately. Um, uh, which we parted our ways a, a, a while ago, but anyway. Um, <laughs> But who knows? Um, the, the, uh, what, I, what I would say is the, the, the prime reason for um, the, the reduction uh, in speed uh, in certain key areas, Banbridge and Dromore included, uh, was primarily safety. And of course, the member would also know that um, a number of safety measures uh, have been carried out over the years. Uh, we continue to uh, review that situation in uh, consultation with the PSNI. Uh, but at the moment, uh, we currently judge that uh, it, is, uh, it, it remains in the best interest uh, in terms of road safety that the 60 mile per hour speed limit uh, should uh, remain in place um, at present. Thank you. And I call Mrs. Joanne Brooks. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number two. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, my department uh, has delivered £15 million of resource at uh, DEL uh, to meet the 4.4 budget uh, reduction agreed by the Executive in 2014-15. These cuts were addressed through a number of savings measures, including a series of savings measures to reduce my department's administration spend, reductions in funding to TransLink, stopping external contractors' work on routine road maintenance, including patching grass cutting and gully emptying, and suspending the use of external contractors for the repair of street lights that fail unless they pose an electrical hazard to the public. However, a number of uh, pressures remain within my department, the largest being the £20 million pressure in respect of the release of value from Belfast Harbour Commissioners. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, my department's budget was set as part of Budget 2011-15 by the then Executive on the basis that £20 million of income would be secured from Belfast Harbour Commissioners in both 2013-14 and 14-15. The Budget Review Group subsequently agreed that the Department should work collaboratively with Belfast Harbour Commissions on, uh, uh, Commissioners on release of value projects. While the Harbour has agreed to undertake £41.5 million of release of value projects and is progressing these, there is no means of crediting this investment to my department's budget. The executive agreed that the shortfall should be uh, addressed through in-year monitoring, and this was the case in 2013-14 when the executive allocated my department £20 million during that year. In September 2014, the Budget Review Group recommended the executive take the same st steps. It has not yet done so, with bids in June and October monitor for monitoring for the £20 million being unsuccessful. Conscious of time, but it is important, and I claim your indulgence. The next stage of resource measures available to me would, include, would involve cutting core frontline services, including some £3 million funding for winter service activities. These measures directly affect public safety, including no gridding or snow clearing. And, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I simply am not prepared to put the public at risk by stopping such services. And I call Ms. Dobson for supper. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Minister for his answer? And I'm sure that many, including my constituents, know the Minister is committed to provision of those winter services. But would he agree with me that Simon Hamilton should know better than to seek to apply pressure to the budget over the port's reserves for what appears to many to be party political reasons? Grateful to the uh, member for her supplementary question, and indeed, um, uh, I, I uh, hope and trust that uh, politics is not being played in terms of anybody's budget. 
uh, and because, quite frankly, uh, uh, these matters are too important. And, and winter services are an essential uh, part of, uh, of, of the services that the RD provide. Uh, and, I, uh, and I do say uh, that uh, what, you know, we are engaging with uh, the Department of Finance and Personnel. Uh, I've made clear to Minister Hamilton uh, my concern and indeed to the entire executive. Nobody should underestimate this. Uh, there, are, there are clear implications not only for the DRD budget but potentially for uh, an executive <coughs> overspend. And surely no one will want to be in that situation because it will reflect uh, badly uh, on all of us, uh, I suspect, and, and I very much hope uh, that people will not play politics uh, and that we can um, restore uh, this budget and ensure uh, that uh, the level of service that we would seek uh, and, and that I would want uh, to provide uh, can indeed be provided. Well, Mr. George Robinson. Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, could I ask the Minister, as we have had a very mild winter so far, and hopefully savings could be made, could I ask the Minister if salt boxes um, will still be provided to rural communities such as farmers, schools, etc., and other road services? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member, and indeed uh, I, I can confirm that, uh, in spite um, of the pressures on me, and given what I have said is that we, we will continue to provide um, winter services. Uh, and whilst uh, the, the uh, early part of, of winter um, uh, has been perhaps uh, a little bit milder, uh, I, I'm certainly aware, and the member will be aware, of weather warnings uh, later this evening in terms of uh, uh, wind speeds. And we are now approaching the, the hard section of winter. Um, but nevertheless, we continue to, um, to put out uh, the, uh, the grit boxes, the grit piles, some 50,000 grit piles, uh, approximately 4,800 salt bins, and we will continue to, to salt uh, the main uh, network. But I do respectfully say to the member that if he wants to uh, assist me properly, then he, he does need to speak to his party colleague, the finance minister, and executive colleagues uh, to encourage them to plug the gap that is currently in my budget. I call Mr Declan Michael Lee. I call Mr Michael Lee. Um, uh, could the minister tell us that, uh, obviously, in, in rural areas, can farmers and, indeed, any other inter interested parties, uh, is it still possible for them to apply to DRD for contracts to clear rural roads, which are particularly affected during harsh weather conditions? Grateful to the member for his supplementary, and indeed, uh, there there are uh, provision. Uh, there, there is ongoing provision for farmers and uh, and, and other such contractors to register uh, and to uh, to give assistance. Um, we do um, have to use the limited resources available to us in the best possible way, um, and of course, uh, we will deal uh, as sympathetically uh, with um, emergency. Um, um, cases that, uh, that, that, uh, that require attention, such as local funerals, etc. But indeed, uh, arrangements are in place to bring uh, farmers and contractors in to assist with the clearance of snow from local roads. Uh, and of course, we have the salt bins, the 50,000 um, grit piles, and of course, self help. Uh, and the member will know, living in the rural communities, uh, how important self help is uh, to, uh, to assist particularly the elderly uh, and those um, who are perhaps um, not able to, um, to, to carry out such functions themselves. So I want to encourage people uh, to continue to do that and work uh, together at community level. Call Mr. David Mc Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Minister says he, he will not put the public at risk and uh, will greatly re relieved to hear that. Could he tell the House how much money he has set aside for compensation liability claims uh, due to failing maintenance and public uh, roads not being uh, properly uh, fit for the road user? 
grateful to the member for his, uh, his question. Uh, can I say there, there, there is as yet uh, no evidence of increased claims uh, against the department uh, as a result of the savings and the cutbacks that we've been forced to make. Uh, and I know that the member, uh, through his membership of the Committee for Regional Development, um, uh, uh, has been critical of, of some of the actions that, that uh, I've been forced to take, and I say that, that I have been forced to take. Uh, and he has also offered uh, solutions that we would somehow find uh, monies available to us uh, by using resources uh, of, of TransLink. Um, and we, we have uh, attempted to use every available source to us. We have forensically, we have forensically looked at our budget, and we continue to do so. But you cannot make savings uh, of the nature of those imposed without having impact. I'm glad to say that hasn't led to an increase in public claims of liability, and of course we will continue to challenge and contest such claims uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. But I don't want to hear members come to this House with uh, manufactured crocodile tears, uh, uh, erring concerns that they're not prepared to support in other places. Uh, I'm very pleased that the member has, through his question, been prepared to acknowledge that my department has indeed uh, been successful in drawing down European funding. Uh, my decision to establish a dedicated EU unit uh, was twofold. Uh, firstly, I believed that there was a need to build and retain specialist expertise of the complexities of a range of EU funding programmes. Secondly, I appreciated that. Uh, appreciated that the benefits of effectively applying that expertise, particularly in the preparation uh, of bids and applications, had the potential to significantly increase the flow of EU monies into Northern Ireland. Clearly, the evidence to date justifies my decision. Since 2013, the EU unit has successfully secured some £33 million of European funding, and it continues to explore further opportunities as I speak. When looking across the board, wide disparities exist in terms of departmental performance. Uh, one of the key reasons for this is that the current incentive uh, to put what we all know uh, are tightly constrained resources into a competitive bidding process is marginal at best. There is therefore a great deal of scope uh, for a reconsideration of how competitive EU funds are collected and distributed at the centre. And if every department uh, were assured of retaining all of the funding that it won, rather than suffering the vagaries of the existing budgetary process, then the probabilities of more departments replicating the success that the Department of, for Regional Development has had would, I believe, be significantly higher than at present. Mr. McCann, for a supplementary. I would like to thank the Minister for uh, his question thus far, and I do believe that uh, European monies uh, provide much needed assistance right, right across the board. But would he say if DRD is in course uh, of reaching their target of drawing down uh, 20 per cent? And uh, could he give us a, a, a time, if not, when, when that would be achievable? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for his uh, encouraging uh, uh, remarks. And I can say that in terms of executive performance, DRD uh, are, are top of the league. Uh, and, uh, I think having created that, e, that special EU unit, it, it's clear that my intention uh, is that we stay top of the league, uh, but that we also encourage uh, other departments uh, to, to benefit from a, um, a, a EU monies. Can I say the, 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 the point that I made in the latter part of the original answer to uh, his question is an important one. I think there would be more incentive for departments and indeed uh, ministers to ensure that Europe was being um, uh, uh, properly um, and uh, forensically um, uh, drained uh, for, in terms of um, funding opportunities. Uh, and I think uh, if, if departments were allowed to keep the money or um, re, uh, 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 you know, uh, to, to spend it within uh, their department re responsibilities, then that would add further incentive to, uh, to that case. Mr. Trevor Clark. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. And I've listened to what the Minister said in terms of keeping the money. I would hope that the Minister is not using that as an excuse, obviously, not to apply for the money. However, there was a debate here in the House last week in terms of the A6. Can the Minister say if there's any applications in terms of drawing down any EU funding in relation to that project? I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member uh, for his um, supplementary uh, for his question. Indeed, uh, we continue to look uh, at all aspects of uh, our projects to see uh, what benefits. I can say that um, there are several possible projects uh, relating to the current 10 T call, um, and indeed, um, the final decision to apply for funding uh, will depend upon the outcome of a fit for purpose test in terms of the call criteria. Um, this includes assessing the maturity, quality, relevance uh, and impact of each project. Projects being considered include uh, the A26, Larryford to Drones uh, Road Junction Duelling and the Newry Southern Relief Road, as well as um, a couple of options from Translink, um, the Coleraine to Londonderry Track, Upgrade Phase 2 and the Knockmore to Lurgan Track Rehabilitation. Thank you. And I call Mr Roy Bay. Question number six. Uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, the regulator published the PC15 draft determination on the 10th of July and consultation closed on the 15th of October. The final determination uh, is expected tomorrow. Uh, this will provide an assessment of the Northern Ireland Water Business Plan and set out uh, the required operating costs, capital and income requirement for the years 2015 to 21. The consultation document uh, on the 2015-16 budget, which I published last week, makes it clear that I will be unable to, fund the fu uh, to meet the funding requirements resulting from the draft determination, and that this is likely to have significant negative repercussions for the quality of services provided by NI Water. Should such a shortfall remain after the final determination uh, emerges and the 2015-16 budget is finalised? these repercussions will become reality in the coming years. At least £15 million additional funding is necessary to maintain delivery of waste and wastewater services at current levels. Uh, the increase is largely uh, as a result of the £13 million increase in rates stemming from the non-domestic revaluation exercise. Failure to provide sufficient funding uh, would reduce Northern Ireland Water's ability to maintain a 24-7 service for handling call, uh, service for call handling and out of hours customer and network responses to service interruptions, flooding and pollution incidents. NI Water has demonstrated that it has improved efficiency since 2007, and this indeed has been independently verified by the regulator. With a reduction in funding, this situation is likely to be reversed and could give rise to environmental uh, failures potentially leading to EU infraction and or legal result as a result of failure to meet environmental standards. Mr Beggs for supplementary. I, I thank the Minister uh, for his answer. To, uh, in his answer, he's indicated some £15 million pounds of a shortfall. Uh, that's quite a significant amount of money. What practical options uh, will uh, be there for Northern Ireland Water in order to uh, operate in such circumstances, and, and uh, how will water quality and water uh, supply be maintained, given that significant uh, level of funding below that set as part of the price determination? Well, I'm grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question, and indeed that is, that is a very serious concern uh, that is uh, at the very front uh, of my mind when considering the issues of uh, the, the uh, next year's budget and future um, financial settlements. Uh, and of course, uh, we've yet to see the final determination, uh, but I have uh, indicated that um, we are some f uh, potentially £15 million um, down next year. Uh, I think that, will, uh, will, uh, that would have an impact certainly on, on aspects of service. Staffing levels. Um, in turn, uh, cannot be reduced without a detrimental impact on frontline services. Uh, and of course, um, it might also be necessary to reduce the use of external contractors uh, to live within budget. So, this again would reduce NI Water's uh, 
ability to maintain a 24-7 service, uh, as well as uh, uh, perhaps uh, give rise to environmental failures. Uh, and as I've said, uh, that potentially leads to EU infraction uh, and legal action uh, as a result uh, of the failure to meet uh, environmental standards. So it is not a pretty picture. And indeed, uh, I've had the opportunity to meet with the, the board of uh, Northern Ireland Water uh, and their senior executives, and they are, they like me, are very concerned at the, uh, at the current financial situation. Thank you. And I call Mr. Merchant and Mueller. Cash the shot. Question number seven. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, the existing York Street Junction is a key junction on the strategic road network which, which links three of the busiest roads in Northern Ireland, uh, the West Link and the M2 and M3 motorways. The M1 West Link improvements were completed in 2010. However, the existing York Street Junction remains a bottleneck on the eastern seaboard corridor. The um, existing uh, uh, a great uh, traffic signal control junction causes considerable congestion and delays for the 100,000 vehicles that pass through it on a daily basis. The development of a road scheme, you will know, follows a well-rehearsed path. With regard to the York Street interchange, the preliminary assessment works have been completed and I announced the preferred route on the 6th of uh, December 2012. Since then, work has continued on the detailed development of the scheme. The proposed solution uh, will provide direct links between the West Link and the M2 and the M3. This will, provide, uh, this will provide for the strategic traffic movements between these three main routes and also cater for local access from the Port of Belfast and the city. The next step will be the publication of the draft statutory orders. These are the direction order, vesting order and an environmental statement. These orders will be published during the current financial year and I will be announcing the date of publication along with the associated consultation process in due course. Depending on the response to the consultation, I may also hold a public inquiry into the scheme. Given the rate of progress, this scheme could commence in 2018, subject to finance, statutory approval and successful procurement with a construction period of around three years. Thank you, Minister, for a comprehensive answer. I wonder if you could probe a related area, uh, which of course you're, you're concerned about, which is air quality uh, levels at that interchange, pollution levels. It's a, it has been known as a black spot or, or hot spot mm -hmm. for nitrogen dioxide for some time. Is it your assessment that we will eliminate uh, the pollution problem at that interchange by the, by the uh, new work? At, at York Street. Well, I'm uh, grateful to the, to, to, to the member and I welcome him to, to, to the House. I think it's the first uh, opportunity he's, he's had to, to question me. Um, the, uh, and I'm not given to, to rash answers, he will realise, uh, so I'm not going to uh, confirm or deny uh, his, uh, his assertion. Uh, I, I'm happy uh, to consider it further uh, and to provide a written response. Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Minister, I imagine, will agree that free-flowing bus lanes will be vital to the success of Belfast City Centre transport, and he'll be aware that a potential consequence of the proposed Taxis Act is that all taxis would be permitted to drive in bus lanes as of June 2015. Can I ask the Minister, therefore, what regulation of taxi bus lane use he will introduce in relation to this matter? Well, I'm grateful to the member uh, for ingeniously um, in inserting uh, a question on bus lanes. Uh, on the issue of the York Street interchange. Um, his, his ability in this respect uh, knows little bounds, but anyway, um, I, I, I am aware of the, of the change being uh, proposed and brought forward uh, by the Minister of Environment, uh, Minister Durkin. Obviously, there are processes uh, that that has to go through through this House uh, and uh, within this Assembly, uh, and uh, I am still considering uh, the position pending uh, the successful outcome uh, of, uh, of that legislation, should it uh, be put in place. So the questions. Um, we now move on to topical questions. And can I just inform members that questions 1, 4 and 5 have been uh, withdrawn within the allotted time frame. So I call Mr Declan McAleer. Uh, 
Uh, the Minister will be aware that the head of a cycling unit, Andrew Grieve, uh, paid a visit to Oma last Thursday to meet uh, local stakeholders, including the Oma Cycling Initiative and the District Council, regarding local, local cycling provision. Can he give his department's commitment to continue working with local, stake local stakeholders to develop the cycling network in the area? I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for his question, and indeed, uh, can I welcome uh, the member's keen interest in cycling? and his champion uh, of, uh, of cycling in Oma and West Tyrone, and thank him also for his response to the, to the recent public consultation. Now, the main messages coming from the consultation are significant support for the strategy and for the three-pronged uh, approach of, of building for uh, the bicycle uh, and supporting and promoting the use of the bicycle, a greater emphasis on safety, uh, and this will indeed help us to, to reach our target audience, citizens who are interested in cycling but concerned about getting on a bicycle. Uh, the need uh, to develop a, a better cycling culture where all road users treat other uh, road users with respect. Uh, I hope that the consultation report will be available uh, in the new year and the strategy will be finalised um, after Easter. This is a 25-year uh, strategy, um, a Northern Ireland strategy, so I would hope it uh, can be rolled out to all areas of Northern Ireland, not least, of course, to OMA, where there is already, uh, I am aware, some excellent uh, infrastructure and many active cyclists, uh, including uh, the OMA Cycling uh, Initiative. Michael Lear for supplement. Uh, Gora Margaret, uh, thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, I appreciate that the consultation only closed a number of weeks ago. Um, could he, I, I note that the draft strategy uh, wasn't rule proofed. Can you give us insurance that when the delivery plan comes out that it will be rule proofed and that rural areas will benefit the same as their, their urban counterparts in terms of the overall plan? I'm grateful to the, to, to the member, and of course, uh, I, I, I'm happy to say that I, I, I want the cycling revolution to extend to all parts of Northern Ireland. Uh, as I've said, not least Oma, uh, but, uh, but uh, all of the towns and cities and the villages uh, as well. Of course, this will take time, but I think there are opportunities available to us, and uh, certainly I know that uh, there, uh, there, are, there is potential for the development of greenways. Uh, uh, w within Northern Ireland, and I'm, uh, indeed I know the members in, uh, interested in that, uh, in the extension perhaps of the, of the old GNR uh, railway uh, route, um, uh, that line, uh, as a greenway from Oma to Londonderry. So I think opportunities are there, uh, and, uh, and I hope very much that we'll have the opportunity to work together positively uh, to, to, uh, uh, to successfully carry through uh, this cycling revolution. Thank you. And I call Mr. Kieran McCarthy. Chairman, I got last time call you. Can I ask the minister if he can advise the House if there are any plans to sell off parts of the embankment along the Cumber Greenway, and if so, what is the time, the time scale for such a disposal? Well, I'm grateful to the member for his uh, uh, his question. Um, I, I'm very happy to confirm, uh, and I don't know what, what rumour mill uh, he's been listening to or where it's coming from, but I have no plans at all. Uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to do as he suggests, uh, or uh, is alarmed, presumably, uh, that that might uh, happen. I think the Cumber Greenway uh, has huge potential. Work has been done. Uh, I think the, the numbers of people using it uh, continue to uh, increase, uh, and I think uh, we, we want to to, to use it uh, to maximum uh, advantage as we uh, as we press home. Um, our ideals for, for the cycling revolution. I call Mr McCarthy for supper. I thank the Minister for his uh, response, uh, but the Minister will know as well as I do that there's never smoke without fire, um, and there's always rumours around. Um, and indeed, I understand it has come from an official from the Department of Regional Development. So that's something maybe you want to. The Cumber Greenway, as the Minister knows, is a fantastic asset for the Strangford and East Belfast constituencies, promoting health and leisure um, activities. Will the Minister guarantee that under his watch, and he has done this for me before in relation to uh, the Senior Citizens Smart Pass, will he guarantee that under his watch this little bit of heaven on earth will be remain a cherished uh, open space for everyone? 
and that the pathway will not be encroached uh, upon in any shape or form. Well, I'm grateful to the, to, to the member, and of course his, his contributions are always heavenly um, uh, when made in this chamber. Um, let, me, let me say that I, I, I know of no plans. I, I, I haven't even heard the rumours uh, that he apparently has heard, even at close source, uh, apparently. Um, and uh, 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 frankly, it, it would make no sense or no logic uh, for my department to start to sell off um, parts of the Cumber Greenway, given the, the exciting plans that we have in conjunction with others uh, to develop it. Thank you. And I call Mr. Ian Mulder. Uh, and uh, could I ask the Minister if he could give us an update on the Marfalt uh, bypass? Uh, could I thank the member for his uh, question? And indeed, um, the Macrofelt bypass uh, is uh, the tenders for the construction um, were uh, received on the 24th of November. Uh, tender assessment is underway with a view to awarding the contract and subject uh, to no commercial challenge. Construction work should start next February. Uh, temporary fencing to secure the six uh, kilometre long site is complete and NI service diversions are underway. The archaeological investigation and vegetation clearance will begin shortly and the, next, and the new carriageway hopefully will be open uh, to traffic in October 2016. The for a Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for giving his uh, answer to this far. Um, good news. Uh, I was just a bit afraid there. You know that there was a bit of slippage, you know, uh, from an earlier date that had been given. So I would like to say well done and ask the Minister if he could provide an assurance that his department will do everything possible to make sure that the project remains on course and that deadlines are met, etc. I thank the member for his uh, uh, constructive uh, comments, uh, and obviously um, uh, there is the potential for good news. We, the, the department will continue to manage this, uh, uh, and my officials, uh, and we hope that we can meet uh, the timetable that I've uh, uh, outlined. And certainly, um, Macrofelt and the people of Macrofelt and the surrounding district I know will, will hugely benefit uh, from this bypass. My, uh, Party colleague uh, Sandra Overland uh, has been uh, a huge supporter and influence uh, to me, uh, uh, encouraging me to, uh, to, to, to bring this uh, scheme forward. Uh, and I'm very grateful that, uh, that, that at long last, after something like a 40 year wait, uh, it will be delivered by an Ulster Unionist Minister. Here, here. Call Mr. Tom Elliott. Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker. And, uh, I'd like to ask the Minister of any progress that is imminent on the A32, and if he's not sure where that is, that's the uh, Enniskillen to Omer Road, or some people call it the Omer to Enniskillen Road. It has got some upgrades in, in recent years, and I know some of the works were removed or, uh, in the previous mandate, but I'm just wondering, because there's some sitting in abeyance, and I'm just wondering where they are at present. Well, I'm grateful to the Member, and <clears throat> he... Uh, Consistently, how could I forget the A32 when he consistently uh, raises it in this chamber and mentions it to me privately? There is seldom an opportunity that we, that we have, even over a cup of coffee, that he doesn't talk about the A32. So, two significant A32 road improvement schemes to a value of over 10 million have been delivered uh, in accordance with the A32 improvement strategy. These were the Drumskinny uh, widening and realignment and the Shanare realignment works. Development work is currently ongoing uh, on two further schemes. It's hoped uh, to publish draft orders for an offline realignment at Cornamuck uh, in March 2015, the approximate construction cost of $5 million. This would uh, bring the project closer uh, to a state of readiness for delivery should funding become available. Uh, preliminary development work is also being taken forward by consultants to identify a preferred corridor for uh, an offline uh, realignment at Kilgorton the League, uh, and the approximate construction cost of six million. And I hear laughter from the member. Um, it is hoped to announce the preferred route corridor in 2015. Hey, thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker. And uh, just to confirm that those townlands are not Irish pronunciation at the moment, but. Uh, 
Can I, I further ask the Minister, that, that's helpful uh, to know where the situation is at the moment, but the A32, he will know, connects with where the proposed southern bypass of Enniskillen uh, is, and I'm just wondering if the Minister has any update on that, because I know significant progress has been made, but it seems to have slowed up, and if we can expect uh, the diggers to be moving on site in the near future. I do hope other members of the House realise the, the, the political pressure that is applied to me by colleagues <laughs> in terms of um, delivering. Uh, but I am pleased to say that uh, design uh, development work to confirm the preferred route on the A4 Enniskillen Southern Bypass uh, alignment is nearing completion. Uh, the preferred route will be available for announcement early in the new year. Um, when a public display or information day will be held to inform uh, the public and invite comment, and further progression of the project will be dependent uh, on the availability of finance. I call Ms. Maeve McLaughlin. Um, could I ask the Minister maybe to clarify if the dividend paid to NI Water shareholders is included in the draft budget? Um, Grateful to the, uh, to, uh, to the member, um, the, uh, the, we, all aspects of, of, of the budget are, are given consideration, uh, including um, uh, that relating to uh, uh, NI Water. And of course, NI Water principally receives its funding, as a member uh, should know or will know, uh, from, uh, from the department and, and therefore from the taxpayer. And so all of that then is reinvested. Uh, in uh, NI Water as a going concern. Welcome for it. Good morning, good morning, and I thank the Minister for that clarification. But could I maybe ask to detail how much has actually been paid to NI Water stakeholders in the course of this mandate? Good morning, good morning. I don't have the uh, available figures, um, and, uh, but I, uh, I will. Uh, uh, if the member uh, wishes to write to me uh, on, on that issue, uh, we'll provide a full uh, answer. Thank you. Um, Mr. Peter Weir is not in this place, so I'll call Mr. Mickey Brady. Colonel Mayor, I got the previous last concordia. Um, in terms of the proposed cuts in the draft budget for road maintenance, uh, could I ask the Minister why only rural roads? Well, I, I, I'm somewhat concerned that, that, that the member would find it okay that uh, all, any road uh, would, would, would uh, suffer from uh, a, a lack of uh, maintenance. Uh, what we are trying to do is to manage a very difficult uh, situation uh, and we want to try and ensure and to minimise um, any reduction in service of frontline services, but it is simply not possible, and I repeat this, uh, it is simply not possible when we're talking about a budget uh, cutback uh, of £65 million uh, pounds projected for next year in the draft budget that we are able to protect all frontline services. And so difficult challenges and choices have to be made. And I would respectfully say to the member that uh, he should use his influence in a positive way uh, by uh, consulting with his executive colleagues to support um, the uh, reduction of impact uh, on, on, on my budget when he is so evidently concerned uh, about the, uh, the, the, the necessary cutbacks and savings that are being forced upon me. Ready for a quick supplement? Thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, whatever influence I have, we always try to use in a positive way. I'm just wondering how these proposals fit in with the programme for government commitment to target rural poverty and social inclusion. Well, I share the member's concern, but I, but I, I bring him back to my central point that, uh, that he, he can do more about it than simply uh, complain to me uh, on the floor of this assembly. He can air his concerns uh, with his senior political colleagues around the executive table, and uh, combined uh, together, perhaps we can have a more progressive uh, attitude uh, than some of the politics that's being played out at the moment. And uh, that brings us to the end of the, uh, the questions. And thank you very much, Minister.